Under the hood of the Chevrolet Volt, you can see that we've got clearly marked orange cabling. And the orange cabling is an industry standard that indicates high voltage. High voltage is defined as anything above 60 volts direct current, DC. Also under the hood of the Volt, we've got an internal combustion engine. It's 1.4 liter. It's an engine generator. And it's fed by a 9.3 gallon fuel tank that is in the rear of the vehicle. This engine generator runs that allows the Volt to extend its range. In other words, it runs on the battery as long as it can, which is typically the 25 to 50 mile range. At the end of the battery's charge, the vehicle is not stranded. This internal combustion engine generator automatically turns on, not to drive the vehicle, not to propel the vehicle, but simply to create electricity, delivers it to the electric motors to drive the front wheels to allow it to continue so like for an another 300 miles. Just an alternator? Not an alternator, but a engine generator that creates electricity, like so a generator that you would have in your so, house. Yeah, so like a Honda portable generator. That's right, that's right. Okay. So it runs at pretty much a constant RPM. Because okay. it's not propelling the vehicle, there's not hooked to a transmission, there's no shifting going on. It's simply on to run to create electricity. Mm -hmm. So how many electric motors are there? There's, are, there's actually a motor generator them. unit that's located right down here in this box. And then inside that box are two electric motors, two AC motors, that work in conjunction with each other, depending on the demand that you got and the speed that you're running. And then both of those motors deliver power to the two front wheels. Okay. Now the other, other um, unique features that you see under the hood here are labeling. We've got orange labeling to indicate high voltage, this is a high voltage component here. It's actually taking the DC current and, and flipping it to AC and delivering it to the electric motors. And then we've also got clear labeling. This is the first responder label or our two battery label where we show a diagram of a vehicle, of this vehicle, that shows where in the vehicle the high voltage battery is located, where the 12 volt battery is located, and most importantly, where the cut point for first responders is located in order to disable high voltage and the airbag system. So if there's any doubt or confusion on where to go to find the cut location, simply opening the hood, finding this label, and looking, it clearly indicates uh, where the cut point is located. Now is that a Chevy thing or is that a... Uh, general Motors. A General Motors thing. Yep. Okay, so, and that, so any general, general Motors hybrid will have that under the hood. You got it. All right. Are they working towards any kind of standardization amongst all the car manufacturers? Yes. Yes, yes we are. Um, we're not there yet, kind of like where the orange cabling is, industry standard. We're trying to get to common cut points, common procedures of how to disable high voltage systems and airbags across the industry between manufacturers. Okay. Now, one of the things I know when we had you up in Traverse City, on this car, when it's on and you open the hood, the motor, the, the, the motor comes on. That's right. All right. And that's more of a safety thing to let you know that the hood is open and that this vehicle is still on. That, that the vehicle is electrically on and therefore you need to go back around and turn it off before you do anything under the hood and you know we're thinking about not only service personnel but homeowners that may be about to change their oil they forgot to turn the car off it's quiet whether it's on or off yep. forgot to do it as soon as they release the hood latch you don't have to open it okay. but just release it to the first detent there's a switch in here that automatically activates that internal combustion engine to turn on it starts running you're clearly not going to be changing oil on a running engine right reminder to go ahead and turn it off. And you very clearly can hear it. When that does pop up even that little bit, I mean, yeah. you hear this gasoline engine engine that mm -hmm. runs this generator, it actually fires up. And, they, and you go, whoa, wait a minute. Because yeah. I know that we did that at Trevor's yeah. to show people. Yep, we did. And then we went in and, and so the switch on the console then to shut the car off. So it's possible in an accident that you actually could have the vehicle stop because they've taken their foot off the accelerator. And quiet. And, it's and quiet. quiet. Yep. And we're coming around to manipulate the vehicle. And that's wow. one of the things with that label there on this car is that it will tell you if you can't, can't remember where those cut points are. That's right. That same thing with the fire helmet. Um, General Motors has taken that fire helmet and they're actually putting it on stuff 
those are places where firefighters should go. So where we want to cut the wire in the back yeah. and those type of things. So Can there's actually the, a we lot see of the that. wire in the back? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Come on around back. If you follow the instructions on that label, which says, come on back to the rear of the car. These guys have found it already. It's behind a piece of trim here. Sorry, guys. That's what it looks like when it's closed up. It's just a, a normal, looks like a storage bin or storage container. On there, we've got a fireman's helmet and a uh, fuse symbol embossed into this plastic. Uh -huh. It's kind of hard to see, but nonetheless, it's on there. No tools required. That's one of the requirements that GM has uh -huh. for first responders. No tools required to get to either the manual service disconnect or the uh, disconnect or location for high voltage and airbags. Once you open this up, we have our first responder cut tape clearly identified with the fireman's helmet wrapped around the very low voltage, low voltage cable. This is 12 volt that you, we want you to chunk out, double cut on each side, take a piece out, and this kills the airbag system and the high voltage system because this is a feed for the 12 volt system. The main 12 volt cable is in this bundle here. There's other uh, wiring in here that's feeding the rear lights and some other things, but rather than wrap this tape around here, this whole bundle is, uh, for manufacturing purposes, is all loomed together. So we just wrap it around the entire harness. And as the diagram shows, you're gonna need a cable cutter. You know, a lot of guys are carrying nippers or pliers in their pockets that you're actually gonna need a good size cable, cable cutter. cutter to actually you to know, cut, to cut this bundle of wires. Yeah. So that's going to be important. That, um, and I think that General Motors does a great job of showing you know, what that cutter looks like. Yeah. So if somebody's you know, down at uh, their local uh, Mon Pa hardware store or whatever, they get the right tools, they're going to help them do the job. Yeah, and this is about one inch diameter uh, harness. Now this is production. If you look at our diagram that we had created before the vehicle started production, we just simply had a couple wires running there on a pre-production vehicle. but. This is really what it looks like in vehicle in final production, and that's an example of the cutters right there that you're going to need. Yep, that, I know that, that size cutter that will get cut. around. It. Yes, absolutely. Yep. That'll cut a one-inch diameter harness. Can you can we show underneath the hatch here where the battery sure. actually is? I know that that's not a place where we're typically going at, but I know people are going to ask where is that. So sure, underneath the load floor in the back here, we've got um, we've got the 12 volt battery underneath this supporting structure. You can see the, there's uh, two small doors here that allow you access to the negative terminal and positive terminal. Um, that's primarily for service. Uh, that's why we ran the cable from the 12 volt battery up the side here because we recognize rear impacts could compromise this and it would be really difficult to get to. Plus, cargo in the back uh, that people typically haul is another hindrance to first responders, so if we, we can get away from that open up the side without any tools, it's, it's much easier and quicker to get to. 